Distractions of Life, written and narrated by Brother Frank Natoli. Forty years ago, the U.S. tabloid landscape included publications such as the National Enquirer, the National Examiner, the Globe, the Sun, the Star, etc. These were a popular form of journalism, focusing on sensationalizing the news. The stories in the tabloids often were included information that were false or exaggerated because these imaginative stories excited readers to enjoy the juicy gossip. Often outlandish stories like aliens born to human woman, chimpanzee head put on human body, dolphin grows human arms, Jesus action figure heals the sick, and alien Bible found they worshipped Oprah were all the headlines to draw attention to the reader. As crazy as these headlines sound, over 10 million people in the U.S. and Canada read these publications. But as the years went on, circulation dropped to less than 200,000 as of today. Why did circulation drop and what might have taken place? How about social media? And while the headlines may be different and a little less extreme in today's social media, Nearly 5 billion users, yes, that's right, billion with a capital B, on social media. The impact of false or exaggerated, imaginative stories have the ability to impact 500 times the number of people than those silly tabloids. And by the way, those tabloids that I talked about earlier, people actually paid money to read, while social media is generally free. Now. Everything with respect to social media isn't bad. In fact, like many things, it can be used for good or evil. But the average American spends two and a half hours daily on social media. Teenagers in the U.S. spend over eight hours per day. So when you think about the value and benefit of spending hours on social media, even if it's just reading our friends' posts, it should cause each of us, including myself, to evaluate its value, and whether this has just become another distraction. Now, a distraction is defined as something that draws your attention away from giving your full attention to an intended objective. So while some distractions, especially when under intense stress or burdens, can actually be emotionally beneficial, routine distractions like spending countless hours on social media, binging on TV night after night, obsessing over sports, all-consuming hobbies or personal interests, etc., etc., are behaviors that we need to reconsider. Why do I say this? Well, in October of 2019, the General Church Priesthood accepted two dreams as revelations, both given to two different people in two different parts of the church about the very same topic, distractions and the negative impact it's having on the people of God. Basically, the Lord was warning us as a church to be more sensitive to the distractions of life that we permit into our lives. He clearly stated in these experiences that we need to draw closer to Him and pay more attention to spiritual matters. In fact, in one dream, the experience states, quote, the brothers and sisters aren't listening. They come, they hear, but they aren't listening. There are too many distractions in their lives. The distractions are pulling them away from me, meaning Jesus. Don't get me wrong. I can justify and rationalize with the best of them just about anything, especially if it has to do with my family or things that I feel are really important. But the Lord is asking us to take an inventory of how we spend our time. What's really important and where should our attention be focused? Yes, our our families, our, our jobs, our Natural life is important, but how does that compare to our spiritual life? Do each of us lay up for ourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves don't break through nor steal? For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Matthew chapter 6, verses 20 and 21. It's up to each of us to evaluate and assess our individual lives regarding what's really important to us. Are we focusing our attention on everything around us or permitting other things to distract us from the vital few important things during this probationary life? King Benjamin makes a statement in his address to his people 
that I absolutely love and believe it applies directly to these revelations because distractions, while maybe not sinful by definition, if they keep us from serving God, if they draw our attention away from the things of God, if they keep us from spiritual fellowship and worship, if they place ideas and thoughts in our hearts and minds that are contrary to the very spirit of Christ, then to us it may be considered sin. But here's what King Benjamin had to say about it. Quote, And finally, I cannot tell you all the things whereby ye may commit sin, for there are divers ways and means, even so many that I cannot number them. But this much I can tell you, that if ye do not watch yourselves and your thoughts and your words and your deeds and observe the commandments of God and continue in faith of what ye have heard concerning the coming of our Lord, even to the end of your lives, ye must perish. And now, O man, remember and perish not. Mosiah chapter 4, verses 29 and 30. Once again, let each of us evaluate and assess our individual lives, being honest with ourselves, that we might unite together as the people of God and focus more of our attention on Jesus, on doing His will, on asking for His Holy Spirit to lead and guide our daily lives, choices, and decisions. May God bless you.